Now, before we talk about virtualization and the problems that exist with virtualization, let's take a quick recap on what the problems we have with the physical server. We have one physical server running one application instance, and uh, we are almost losing every, uh, you know, we are not really utilizing the capacity of the server. We are basically primarily using like five to ten percent of the compute and the whole capacity of the server. Plus, at that and on those in those days, when a business want to launch an application, they will have to place an order for a physical server. And uh, by the time that server was made available, it was patched. Operating system was operating system was installed, patched. Network was set up. Storage was uh, mounted, and the whole server was mounted onto a rack. It would take about roughly six to six to ten weeks and by the time it might happen that the business is losing in terms of money and it also might happen that the users would have moved to a different application or from a competitor and that's a loss to the business also they they all it happens that if, if you even if you noticed uh, during COVID, when everything was uh, you know cases were increasing all across the world a lot of applications came up uh, there were a lot of people who were developing new applications and making them available for free. There were different dashboards that were made available. Now imagine, if those applications were to run on a physical server, instead of being hosted somewhere in cloud or anything like that, if they were to be hosted on physical server, server by the time they could put the data or the application on a server, maybe COVID was kind of gone. like. Uh, or at least the, they were too late into the into the hype. It was it an application has to be delivered to the closest or to the nearest point in time where the demand when the demand is increasing. So when you have a physical server, you you get it, you buy it, you procure it, you patch it, you have people working on it, and you are investing onto it. So you are investing in terms of capital, you are investing in terms of people. And ultimately what you end up running is a single application and utilizing only 10% of your server, which is a nasty waste. Then with virtualizations, a lot of things happened, um, improved. Basically you could utilize your uh, physical server to a capacity of more than 50%, but hey, that's not the best. And there are certain problems with this model as well. Now. We all know that, uh, let's get rid of this. For for each VM, there is a there is an operating system. So, there is it's an operating system on each VM, which basically gives you the feel of having your own system and basically working on an actual machine and not a virtual machine. So here we had, so here we had a single OS. Now we have three OSs, and uh, each one of them is going to require management, uh, patching, security patches, management, um, different servers, uh, network stack, storage, and whatnot. And guess what? Uh, OS are, I would say, they are resource hungry. So uh, what you will have, what would happen is while you were aiming to you know, make the best out of your server, a lot of resources will be eaten away by operating system because you have tons of like, three operating systems setting to run three applications. It's like, wow, yeah, not, not a really good design. And plus, um, if we go by the saying that there's a hypervisor and there's a operating system layer in between them. Let's go with by this saying. Or at least it will be there when you are, when you use, uh, even if you use a VM, virtual machine manager or something like that. There is a software that, that lies on, uh, on top of operating system. I don't really recall the name, but it helps you work with the hypervisor itself. Um, okay, so there, if there is an operating system here, so for your particular application, there is nothing that this specific operating system is providing which this operating system cannot. I mean, it comes with a standard set of libraries and those libraries are available here as well. Then why to introduce again the operating system again? Why not just connect these applications directly to leverage the 
facilities that are available provided by the operating system that is lying on your actual physical server. So that was a massive waste of, I would say, resources because OS is like, it, it's, a, it's a lot of libraries and modules that you don't really need. I mean, let's, let's imagine you want to just run a, um, a file server, let's say. Now, if you're running a file server, you have ho if you're hosting a file server, you don't really need media player libraries or drivers. Why to have them on your operating system? Now, I do agree that there are lightweight operating systems that are specifically designed to uh, run different kind of applications. But hey, it, it's still not the minimal. It still has a lot of things. So yeah, we all have to agree that this is not, we should agree basically, not have to agree, but we should, we would agree that this is, this is a lot of waste of resources. And how did we solve it? We basically got rid of this thick layer of operating system and VM basically and let applications run or use the capabilities of the kernel that is available on the physical server itself. This was made possible with containers and we will talk about that next.